In the last video, we created our very first custom hook. In this video, let's take a look at our second example. We are going to be creating a new custom hook called use counter. This hook will make it possible to reuse logic for a simple counter. Just like the previous video, we are again going to tackle this in two parts. In the first half, we are going to implement a counter. In the second half, we are going to extract the reusable logic into a custom hook. Let's begin. I'm going to create a new file called counter1.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a functional component. Now let's implement the counter. For the counter, we need three basic scenarios. Increment the counter, decrement the counter, and reset the counter value. First, I'm going to import useState from React. Next, we create a count state variable. So within the component, const count comma set count and the initial value is zero. Next, we define three methods to increase, decrease and reset the counter value. Let me copy paste the three methods. You can see that we have increment, which increments the count value, decrement, which decrements the count value, and reset which sets the count value to zero. Finally, let's add the JSX. First, an h2 tag to display the count value, and this is followed by three buttons, one each for the functions we have just defined, increment, decrement, and reset. All right, let's save this file, include it in app.js, and test it out. I click on increment, the counter increases, click on decrement, the counter decreases and click on reset, the value is set back to zero. Now let's say we need the exact same counter functionality in a different component. Let's create a new file called counter2.js. And I'm going to copy paste the code from counter1 and rename counter1 to counter2. Finally, I will include the component in app.js. If you now take a look at the browser, our second counter should also work as expected. But we do have one problem. We are duplicating the code. And how do we improve this? The answer is again, creating a custom hook. So within the hooks folder, I'm going to create another file called usecounter.js. This will be our custom hook for reusing counter functionality. I am going to use the snippet rfce to add the boilerplate code. Next, we are going to extract the reusable logic from the component and add it to the custom hook. So remove the state variable along with the methods and paste it in usecounter.js. We can remove react from imports and instead import useState. This is required for our custom hook. So now our custom hook has the reusable logic, but we need a way to access the count value and these methods from our component. So instead of returning any JSX, our custom hook is going to return an array of values. We return count, increment, decrement, and reset. By doing this, we can now access the value and the methods using array destructuring in the component. Const count increment decrement reset 
is equal to use counter. Again, make sure to import it at the top. I'm going to copy this and do the same in counter2 as well. Also add the missing import. If you now save the files and take a look at the browser, our components still work as expected. But this time, we have written better code. What you should also keep in mind is that hooks provide a great deal of flexibility. Right now, our custom hook has an initial count value of 0. We can change this by including a parameter for the initial count value. I'm going to add a parameter initial count is equal to 0 and pass this as the argument to use state. This will also be the reset value. So if at all the initial count is specified, that value is used, else 0 is used. Now back in counter 1, I will not specify the initial count which defaults to 0 and in counter 2, I will specify initial count to be 10. If you save the files and take a look at the browser, you can see that counter 1 still starts at 0 but counter 2 now starts at 10. Next, let's also customize the value to increment or decrement. Back in VS Code, in use counter.js, I will add a second parameter to use counter. This is going to be value. Now in the increment and decrement functions, we replace 1 by value. Finally, in counter 1, the value parameter is going to be 1. So initial count 0, value is 1. And in counter 2, initial count is 10 and value is also going to be 10. If you go back to the browser, counter 1 starts at 0 and changes value by 1, whereas counter 2 starts at 10 and changes value by 10. So as you can see, writing your own custom hook can be pretty useful. In the next video, let's take a look at another example of custom hooks. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.